So my name is Raji Ambi Karaja. I am an electrical engineer. I've just finished my PhD. Um, I am the Sydney chapter leader of a global nonprofit called Room to Read, and I um, I was on the academic board of the University of New South Wales as well. So I do a lot of work around generational diversity in the workplace and a mix of my engineering and nonprofit. In terms of what it's like for women in engineering, it's you know there are lots of opportunities available to you. Um, you get a skill set that's very invaluable, but it can be quite daunting in the workplace because you know you're in amongst people who you know who aren't of the same gender and also often not of the same age. So you could learn how to swim in the deep end, very much so. But you know you you make your own path. As I said, there's lots of opportunities available. So, um, and often it's the female touch that can help balance out the workplace and then sort of make a team work better as well. So. And there's this sort of culture that's been around for a long time who don't know how to incorporate women and all of a sudden they're, I mean as much as I said there was 15 people, the number is still growing every year. Um, so now as there's an increase of women coming into, into the engineering space, it's like we're trying to work out how best to handle that. So in terms of challenges, one of the things that I think workplaces need to look at is trying to be more open and flexible with understanding how different people approach work and communication. So it doesn't just mean, you know, in terms of flexible working hours, but also, you know, providing training to managers so they understand different ways of communicating. All of that is really useful as well. So I'm involved in a not-for-profit uh, called Room to Read. It's a global mm -hmm. not-for-profit. Um, in terms of why, I, I had a really strong passion for the cause. Um, you know, it's, it's around education, providing education to kids, and I have a strong belief around that. But one of the things I learned inadvertently was that I didn't realize I was, I was developing this skill was the ability to deal with people. And like no matter what job you're in, or no matter what profession, that's the skill that's common across the board. Um, and then in this nonprofit world, I met people who I never would have met in my engineering life at all. Um, learned different ways of communicating, different ways that people work. And I, my advice for people would be to put yourself in situations like that where you are immersed around people who aren't part of your day to day. Because if you learn how to negotiate with people and negotiate the idiosyncrasies, that's only going to benefit yourself and benefit them as well. So a lot it all started out as being, you know, about the cause, and it still very much so is. Um, there's been other benefits along the way. As an engineer, now I have added, as a result of my non-profit work, fundraising, marketing, communication skills, strategy development, which wasn't part of my engineering package before. So I've now an enhanced package, really. Mm. And what are your future plans to, to get involved with not, more not-for-profits or to try and uh, build up the experience of not-for-profits to look at um, perhaps listed boards? Or? So in terms, so I sort of separate my engineering life and my not-for-profit life. Um, in terms of my engineering life, like I'd love to be on a, a listed board um, down the track um, once I've developed the appropriate experience and skills. In terms of nonprofits, as I said, I'm passionate about education. I'm also really passionate about mental health. I'd love to be on a board that addresses mental health issues. I think that's really important in Australia. I think Australia doing great work there. Mm. So yeah, no, definitely working my way towards I that. I think Gen Y has a lot to offer. Male and female have a lot to offer. They're very innovative. They're very creative. They come up with great ideas. Something they could really do is to try and step outside their comfort zone, give themselves more opportunities. Um, you know, if your skills are in research, um, you know, you're good at one thing in particular, go do something different like public speaking or communications, like develop another set of skills. Um, stop and listen to other people. I think Gen Y is so caught up in instantaneous communication all the time, but just taking the time to stop and listen um, would, be really, would be really valuable. And I think also really just have humility and allow yourself be, to be vulnerable. Like, ask questions. If you don't know the answer, that's okay. Just ask questions and, and interact with people that way. But I think, you know, the, provide your input in terms of flexible workplace. You know, Gen X has done a lot of the pioneering around flexible workplace arrangements, um, women being in the workforce, all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, run off the back of that and then set the legacy for the next generation. I think that's, that's really important.